Francia Corta is an Italian sparkling wine with a controlled and guaranteed designation of origin. Originally from the hills of Brescia, it is one of the most appreciated wines by bubble lovers, although it is much more than just a bubbly wine. Let's just call it Francia Corta. But what makes this wine so special? How is Francia Corta born? What is special about its production area? Let's find out together in this third episode of How to Make Wine. Let's start by exploring the origin of Francia Corta with some of its history. The wine takes its name from the hilly area of Francia Corta, literally short France in Italian, but contrary to what one might think, the name has nothing to do with France. Actually, Francia Corta is only the Italianized contraction of Curta Franca, that is, a region that at the time of the Republic of Venice was exempt from taxes. You should also know that one type of Francia Corta is the Satin, a term that may sound French, but actually derives from the local dialect and means silk. In the region of Brescia there was, and still is, a lot of silk production. It is unusual to have a wine named for something so unconnected to it. Perhaps the Satin's name refers to the light and delicate aromatic notes that only a Francia Corta can offer. Where is this wine produced? The Francia Corta region is located in the middle of Lombardy, south of the Lake Iseo and not far from Milan covering an area of about 200 square kilometers, including 19 municipalities in the province of Brescia. In this strategic area, the climate is fairly similar to what you would find in the northern Italian plains, but with all the benefits of the nearby lake. In the summer, it cools the area with the air currents from the Camonica Valley, while in the winter, the lake returns the accumulated heat and prevents damage to the vines from the cold northern Italian winters. The region of production is not particularly extensive when compared with other wine-producing areas, considering that it is no longer possible to add new vineyards with the controlled and guaranteed designation of origin, the value per hectare of the land is around 230 to 300,000 euros. In addition to restrictions on the production area, the grape blend must be just right. For the production of Francia Corta, only the use of white grapes is allowed. Chardonnay, Pinot Blanc, Herba Mat and sometimes Pinot Noir. Vineyards with Francia Corta controlled and guaranteed designation of origin must have enough sunlight, not be at the bottom of valleys, in wetlands or near rivers. In addition, the maximum altitude of the vineyard should not exceed 550 meters above sea level, since beyond that altitude the grapes do not mature enough for the requirements of Francia Corta. So the long-awaited harvest period has arrived. In Francia Corte, the harvest takes place between the second week of August and the first week of September. In order not to damage the grapes, the harvest will be carried out strictly by hand. The grape bunches will be placed in crates with a capacity of no more than 200 kilos, to avoid any of them going to waste. After the harvest, the must is made exclusively by a gentle whole cluster press, without first destemming the grapes. The only exception to this are the Pinot Noir grapes, intended for the production of Francia Corta Rosé. This almost manual technique is very important to ensure the correct composition of must during fermentation. So, the grapes have been harvested and carefully pressed. We just have to make the wine. The method used for the production of Francia Corta is, you guessed it, the classic Francia Corta method. This method includes, in addition to harvesting by hand, a first fermentation and the creation of the cuvée, that is, the assembly of different varieties of grapes from different vineyards and vintages. At the first bottling, Francia Corta is put into new glass bottles with sugar and yeast and closed with a metal crown cap. The bottles are then placed on their side for the second fermentation. The aging period, which takes place with the bottle upside down, depends on the type of Francia Corta that is being produced, and varies from 18 months for the normal Francia Corta up to 60 months for the premium Francia Corta Reserve. An important part of the aging period is the riddling. The bottles are moved one eighth of a turn per day. If a bottle is aged for 18 months before being put on the market, it passes through the hands of the winemaker approximately 540 times. After the aging phase, the bottles are disgorged. Modern machines quickly freeze the parts of the neck where the yeast sediment accumulates, so they can be removed with ease. Since opening the bottles means losing some of the wine, the bottles must be topped up with liqueur de tirage, wine mixed with different amounts of sugar. The recipes of these additions are jealously guarded by each winemaker. Finally, the bottle is sealed for sale with the familiar mushroom-shaped champagne cork covered with a metal wire cage. 
French accorta can be simple, satin, or rosé. The simple French accorta is composed of Chardonnay and Pinot Noir, although it is also allowed to use Pinot Blanc, up to a maximum of 50%. The French Accorta Satin is composed mainly of Chardonnay and Pinot Blanc. Rosé is the only French Accorta to be composed of Herba Mat grapes as well as Pinot Noir, Blanc and Chardonnay. In addition to these three types, there are also French Accorta Millesimato, with 60 months of maturation, and Reserve. As an aside, Millesimato wine is produced with the grapes of a single vintage, as opposed to the Cuvée. The French Accorta is also characterized by different dosages of liquor de tirage. They can range from the zero dosage, the driest of the range, through the extra brut, brut, extra dry, and dry, to the sweetest, demi-sec, that goes well with dessert. What if you want to buy and taste a bottle of French Accorta? To the delights of your wallet, Franciacorta wines come in a wide range of prices, which can range from a 20 euro bottle to 130 euros for a 10 year old reserve. To make sure your bottle of Franciacorta tastes great even after a while from the purchase, the correct conservation is crucial. To minimize the risk of the wine deteriorating, it should be stored in a cellar, protected from light and possibly at a constant temperature between 10 and 14 degrees Celsius. The typical color of French Accorta is generally straw yellow with golden highlights. It has hints of bread crust and yeast, citrus notes such as mandarin and grapefruit. It also has aromas of dried fruit, almond and hazelnut, and white fresh fruits, apples and peaches. The appearance of the wine is a part of its tasting, and one of the characteristics of Francia Corta is its perlage, the typical effervescence of sparkling wines that in the case of these wines is very fine and gentle. Therefore, rotating the glass during the tasting would flatten a good part of the bubbles and therefore lose the essence of the wine itself. Each wine has the right glass in which it can be tasted best. As for all sparkling wines, the right glass should be a stem glass, but there is a special Francia Corta glass. This particular glass was introduced by the Consortium for the Protection of the Francia Corta. It has the classic rounded tulip shape, but the perlage point has been positioned deeper to better release the microbubbles that rise upwards, enhancing the aromas and scents. Depending on the kind, both meats and fish dishes are combined with Francia Corta. The recommended serving temperature of Francia Corta is between 8 and 10 degrees Celsius. For Millesimato, the recommended temperature is a little higher, 12 degrees. Among Italian wine lovers, there is a long-standing debate. Which is better, Francia Corta or Champagne? We should specify that the two are completely different wines, and therefore it does not make much sense to continue comparing them. Regardless of one being Italian and the other French, there are several aspects to consider, from the cultivation of grapes to the number of bottles produced per year. First, the ecosystems in which the vines grow are completely different. Second, the climate, rainfall, the number of sunny days in Italy are different from those in France, characteristics that shape the growth of the grapes and therefore influence the final product. Certainly, also the balance between the various vintages is a factor that differentiates Francia Corta and Champagne. French wineries can count on the cuvées of many vineyards, with their production of 300 million bottles per year, ensuring a stability between the vintages, something that is not possible in Francia Corta given the small extension of the vineyards, only 16 million bottles a year. As if that were not enough, the regulations governing the production of wine are different, making the comparisons between Francia Corta and Champagne quite useless. And you, what do you think? Comment if you have anything to share or add. Which Francia Corta do you think is the best? If you like this video, please click like or subscribe to our channel and vote below. Which wine would you like to see featured in the next episode?